Hi everybody, my name is Terry Sproul and I'm oh okay. Hi everybody, my name is Terry Sproul and I want to welcome you to your, to my studio. Tonight we are going to continue in the art journal. And I had a special request especially for watercolor pencils. We've done a lot of watercolor, but we haven't played anything with pencils yet, so that was going to be fun. And I'm excited to um, show you some cool ways to use that. Um, I see a few people are in the room. Uh, Vanessa and Mark, I see. I'm not sure who else is in the room. There's quite a few, but I don't see the names. So if you do have questions, you can either put them either in the chat over on um, YouTube or you can put them in the chat over on um, Google+. Either way, because I do have that open also. Um, I am going to quickly turn the camera over to Joe because he wants to talk one more time about the postcard swap. I did get mine. Where are they? Where are they? I did get mine the other day. I don't see them, but Aren't I did get them. I thought you were done by Bye, then. everybody. My name oh, is Terry Sproul. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Sorry, Aren't you guys. Done with, you aren't done with yours yet. Come on. I'm not done with mine yet. I'm being bad. I just I got one side done. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm going to give it to Joe. Here you, you go. Should made, you should have made all your postcards during tonight's show. <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> so you can do mixed media on those postcards. So remember, folks, we have 57 folks signed up. It's so cool. It's not too late. You're going to get a little pack of postcards, 10 of them, handmade postcards just like this. When you open up the pack, you're going to have to kind of peel these apart, you know, the same way you almost cleave mica. So it's a little 4 by 6 postcard handmade paper, very stiff and perfect to art on. So I showed you the ocean one last time. This is what I did this time. I used mixed media techniques that Terry showed us. First, I have to show you this little tiny, he's very tiny chickadee that's made out of all separate pieces of paper. And then I shaded his belly with pan pastels. And then I took the plain postcard and I coated the backside with perfect paper adhesive to seal it so it'll be easy to write on. And then on this side, first I collaged a piece of sheet music. I think you can see that under there. So collaged a piece of sheet music. Then I took the sheet music and I put some white acrylic paint all over it, but really heavy in this corner. Then on top of that, I put some light blue glaze, again, really heavy in that one corner. Then I stamped the sentiment. And what my plan is, if I can hold this upside down, which is always going to be a challenge, my plan is to glue the little bird some here. Whoops. Oh my gosh, I lost my bird, Terry. I'm going <laughs> to glue the little bird on the card. So that's my second one. I only have seven more to go. <laughs> so you're going to get addresses on December 16th, nine of them. Drop your cards in the mail December 23rd. And then in January, late January, I'm going to do a free online show. And we're going to teach you how to make a great keepsake to put all these cards in. So the 16th is the date you get the addresses, but you don't have to mail them till the 23rd. So you have 20 days to make nine postcards. And every technique Terry's been showing you works great, right? This is collage, paint, and stamping, just like you would in an art journal, but it's on a six by four handmade postcard. Thank you, Terry. There you go. What do you think? How's the little bird? Very cute. That is very cute. I did find mine while he was talking. The only thing I've done so far is stamp on the front of it. Or the, actually, that would be the back where it says the address. That's all I've done. I know, bad. That's all I've done. But I pulled them apart, see? I love that stamp, though, Terry. What's that stamp from? That stamp, I believe it is um, a stamp potique, if I believe correctly. I'll double check that and let you know, but it's a stamp potique, I believe. Like, how beautiful is that on the back of the card? I know. It's perfect for postcards. So. What I'll do is send you all nine of mine and the addresses, and then you can stamp that on the back, write them, and send them. Well, then you better get going. Because <laughs> if you want me to do that, you better get it going. Okay, I'm switching over cameras here, guys. Be nice, or I'm stealing your stuff at CHA. Uh, so he says. Okay, I want to say real quickly to Pamela, hello. Heather, hello. Um, Pam... Also, another Pam, hello, and Robert, hello. Thank you for joining me, guys. I appreciate it. Okay, I did do a tiny, tiny bit of prepping, just because this is going to take a while to dry, to show you what I was going to do tonight. Um, I did 
prior to the show, I did tape my seam and gesso like I normally do. But I also went in and I took Interference Blue. And I've talked to you guys about this before. Interference Blue is kind of a clear, translucent paint that has a blue tinge to it. It's just a highlight of blue. And you can kind of see it in there. But I plan on doing a second coat because I did it on the bottom on the page before I went in and put my golden, and I've used these before, glass bead gels. We talked about these too. This is a product from Golden. And as you see, I only have a little bit left. But it's kind of like a paste. And I took my spatula. And I just went in. I always put it on the back. And I put a real thin coat of those beads over top of the um, blue interference after it dried. Now, like I said, it's not coming through as much as I want. So I am going to put another coat on the top. So I guess my um, comment to you is you probably don't need it on the bottom. I learned that the hard way, I guess. Now, Interference Blues, just to remind you, another quick lesson on paints. I won't get into this too much, but if you look on the back of Golden's paints, it tells you all about the paints and what they are. Like this one says it's very transparent. We talked about that. That's the very first one or opaque, the little line says it's way over in the transparent section. Um, is it matte or is it glossy? It's kind of sitting towards the matte section, so it's not very glossy. Is it thin or is it thick? It's sitting over by the thin section. And then is it low tack or high tack? And it's sitting right about the middle for that one. Sorry, I didn't mean to be out of screen there. But that's basically how you can pay attention to what your paints say and what they do. So again, this is the um, Interference Blue. And I'm just going to real quickly, just so this will dry, I am going to paint some of that right over these glass beads. So after I put the glass beads on, I let them dry. And it takes about an hour. And you could probably speed it up some with your um, heat gun. But you know, I just put it on. I told you I do a lot of stuff at night that needs to dry and then in the morning when I wake up it's dry for me and I can go right to work so that's kinda what I did last night before I went to bed so I'm going to real quickly just put some more color right on top of these beads and I'm using that interference um, blue and my idea on these was to make snow now for you guys who are doing the classes with me if you do not have any of these glass beads, we have used them before, but say you didn't buy any before and you still don't want them, you could do the same idea with, say, um, thick matte medium or um, uh, US Art Quest 101 heavy, or you could use a molding paste, could give you that same bumpy snow idea. The only reason I like the gel. Um, glass gels is because they kind of glisten like snow glistens so that was kind of my idea it glistened <laughs> that's why I wanted to use the um, the beads but you definitely could use any of those other things that I just suggested and I would do the same thing I would take my um, my spatula I would scoop it up always using the back side and I would put it on there I would leave a little bit of lumpiness because snow is kind of lumpy and maybe even some peaks by pulling up on it like that would leave peaks. And then I'd let that dry. And then I would use like interference blue. If you do not have interference blue, you could use like a, a, a watered down or I don't like to use the word watered down because if you water down um, acrylic paints, it breaks the the acrylic pieces apart and makes them the way acrylic paints dry is one they're like little round knobs of acrylic and if you put a lot of water in them these spread apart and when they spread apart they have no way of binding to glue down to your page so that's why you don't want to do a whole lot of water I got a little off track there but you want to use um, like glazing fluid 
or you can use some water. Just don't use a lot of water when you um, use your uh, paints. Just don't water them down a whole lot. Maybe 20% would probably be good and be just fine. Okay, I want to quickly say hello to Cynthia and Heather and Rose. All oh, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, Mark is here. Angie's here. Um, Ree is here. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so while that's dry, I want to put some color up here on top. Now we wanted to learn about watercolor pencils. These ones that I'm going to use tonight are from Fiber Castell and they are their watercolor pencils. They're really nice to work with, super easy to work with. I like them a lot. Their colors are great. They have a great range. Um, the winner for tonight is going to win, um, I think it's three or four of these I have in a package set for them. So t I pulled out some blues and purples. You can kind of see the colors I pulled out there. A range of blues, a range of purples. Um, that's kind of a little bit of a green, but who knows if I'll use it or not. And it's going to be really this simple. I'm just going to color. I'm just going to get some color on my background. Remember, whatever you do over here, you need to do over here. It doesn't have to be in the same place, but don't just put color one color on one side, not the other. So I'm just going to scribble in a few spots using color pencils. And these are the fiber castells. And these um, are really nice as far as they um, they stay sharp real well. They don't break. There are some really cheap color pencils out there that break, 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 and never allow you to have a true. Hi, Tristan. Winners. Yes, we have a winner here every single um, Tuesday night, Tristan, but you've got to play along. And most of you guys know how to play along. You join my group, All Things Terry Sproul, and you post your pages. It doesn't have to be necessarily a journal page. It could be a canvas. It could be anything that I inspired you to do with the techniques that I teach that night. So that's that question. So I'm going in and putting all these different colors in here, and I'm just scribbling on my background. So yes, that's how I pick a winner. I go and whoever posts a project on my group page that week, I pick from them a winner. So I've got all kinds of blues and a little bit of greens and some purples on here. And I got it good and covered. So uh, okay, so I answered Tristan's. Now, what you can do at this point, you can do multiple things. You could take a spray bottle and spray this and just take a paintbrush to it. You could take a wet, large paintbrush. You could use um, um, watercolor pen, um, uh, brushes. Now, there are some all kinds of different watercolor brushes out. Yakusomo, which I'll put the website address on my um, uh, blog tomorrow, has the best ones I've ever seen. And I'm going to explain to you why I like them so much over the other ones. These have a bladder, so when you fill it, you fill this bottom part with the water, and see how it's got a little um, stopper there? Most of them only have that stopper. If you look at this one, See how it's got a filter in that top part? So the, the cheapy ones, when you squeeze them, give you like a gush of water. These have more of a controlled water flow out of them. So that's why I like these over the, any of the cheap ones. And once you buy a set of watercolor brushes, You'll probably never need another set if you take care of them. And they're really easy to take care of. As far as that, they're basically just, um, uh, you know, keeping them clean. This set is so weird. There are many beads in the snow stuff. Yes, these, these particular, um, Rose just talked, asked about um, these beads. And they actually do look like little tiny beads. 
See that? That's why I thought it looks makes a perfect snow. Because look at them. They're like little beads. Isn't that cool? Okay. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. So now that I've colored my whole background, now I need to go in with water. And like I said, you can do any of those ways that I just said. You can literally just spray the background and then go in with a brush and start blending and you'll see these colors are going to just blend and make just all kinds of yumminess and see how that's just making me a beautiful background oh look how pretty that is so it's just and because it's water it's going to like go down into those sections where it's just going to fill everything in for me and you could even go in and do the smash technique you guys know the smash technique where you get it wet get it really flowing and then smash the book <laughs> can you tell my journals well loved look how how much paint I get on it and then open it back up now cuz i got some drips here i'm going to go in and do the Let's make it flow and move. Sorry if I go out of camera there. So don't mind me if I go out of camera. I'm just trying to get this paint moving. So there we go. So look at that beautiful background I got going. And you can dry at this point and then go in and put more color in if you want. Now, for that little spot right there that's bleeding down into my snow, you could come in with a baby wipe and pick that up. Or, if it doesn't bother you, don't let it bother you. You know, some people that would bother, some people won't. So... Just trying to get that in the center to move. Okay, again, if I didn't, if I wanted that a little more dark, a little more intense, at this point I could go in and, um, you know, put more color on top of it at that time. The other way that you can use your color pencils, I'm going to pull out here because I want you to see this, is you can actually put water down on a palette or whatever and pick up your watercolor pencils, actually dip them into water and come back in and, and blend them. They're going to still be, they'll be a little more intense and you will have, what's the word I'm looking for, um, a little more, you'll see more lines, so it won't look so watercolory per se. So if you're looking for a little more exactness, you can come in and use your water pencils either as a direct or with a little water in them like I am here. So I'm going right along my edge of my snow to give that a little more detail. So there's a couple ways you can use them, and I'm going to show you one more here in a second. So let me get my detail in here. Oh, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We did. We just went to um, the bottom of the mountain that I live on. As most of you know, I live on a mountain. Um, has a little restaurant. And we went down to that little restaurant for dinner. So it was very nice. Um, just making sure I'm not missing any questions here. Looks like it's all just basically hellos, but I want to make sure. Um, you can mix um, paint into this color also, into the beads. So, I am going to just get a little more color in here, a little more water, and then we will go on to the next technique real quick, because I just want this a little darker for me. So again, I'm just scribbling. Paintbrush. There it is. Paintbrush. Water. Blend. 
this technique without using the pencils really you see no um, pencil lines if you see my page it absolutely has no pencil lines at all on it he's a little more purple though huh it's just noticing that when I was looking at it in the uh, in the computer here it just needs more purple It's going to be cold here tonight. I know I shouldn't complain. I'm in Southern California and I've had days in the high 70s all week long. But it's about ready to change. It's going to drop into the 20s tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I don't have interference, but I have glaze. Oh, good. So, yes, you could use um, the glaze. But what I would do, Robin, Robin just said she didn't have the interference. I didn't explain that very well. I would put probably, usually it's like 50-50 on the glaze and um, um, paint, but you might even want to do it a little more glaze so it's a little more translucent. So you know what I'm saying there? So that's what I would do, but, um, but experiment with that. That's the best part about the whole thing is you get to experiment and see what you come up with. Okay, so this part's done. I'm going to let this dry and... Where are my little guys that I'm going to use tonight? I am... Where did my little guys go? I am using the cutest stamps, if I can find them. Because I have them colored, so I really need to find them. <laughs> oh, this is weird. I just had them sitting here. Make sure they're not in my book somewhere. So, oh, lordy. This is not good. How embarrassing. Okay. How weird. Oh, there they are. Okay. Look at these two guys. Oh, actually, I want to show you more. Um, Sin City Stamps, as you know, I um, work with them. They have, and I'm not a cutie, cutie girl. I really ain't, guys. My stamps are not cutie. I don't do cutie stuff. But I have to admit, these are just adorable. I just love them. <laughs> these are the penguins, and it's called Penguins on Ice. And these are the two I'm going to use tonight. But while I was coloring the other day, I also colored in these two. They're on the same plate. A plate of stamps is um, tw about 20 or $21. And you get multiple images, not just these four that I'm showing you, but these are just so cute. So, anyways, I'm using these tonight. If you just outline the image, can I have a small brush? Yes, absolutely. That's what I was just about ready to talk to you about, Ray, is coloring in small images with color pencils. That's the next thing we're going to do. Now, I did already do this guy because you guys don't want to watch me color in forever. <laughs> so... What I'm going to do is color in this guy for you. Now, normally, I do stamp first on a large piece of paper, color in, and then fussy cut out. But I didn't want you to have to watch me do all that, so I'm going to fussy, I'm, I fussy cut it first for you. The first thing I'm going to do is color in the body of the image. Yes, penguins are black and white, but I found this kind of... Um, purplish color. It doesn't have a number on it it's, or a name on it. It's number 139. And it's kind of a really pale, pale, pale lavender and it kind of working. Now when I color in with my color pencils, I follow the artist's design. Hi Liz! I pay attention and, to... Terry, I got a tip. If you were ready fussy cut it out like you did, put a little repositionable tape on the back and tape it onto something and that way you don't have to try to hold it with your finger because otherwise these little guys just like slide all around when you're trying to color them. That's a very good tip. <laughs> Let's see if I can find a little piece of double-sided tape here. Because they do. They move all kinds of places. So I'm just going to put some double-sided tape on the back here and glue him down. That was a good tip, Joe. Thank you. Okay, now watch where the artist has their lines. That's where you want to color. So what I do is I take my color pencil and I go right along 
those lines that they have drawn in for us. And they're kind of the, the shadowy lines, I guess I'm going to say, the details. And even this black on here, I'm going to color in the black with this, and you'll see why, because I'm going to pull out from there. So I'm going to get that done first. So I'm going to get him all colored, the body. So you see, I didn't put a lot of um, color, per se, on there. Then I'm going to grab my color, uh, my color um, brush. And what I do, and this is already wet, is I very lightly pull out from where I got that color into the uh, rest of the image. This has got a lot of, hold on here. I didn't clean my brush very well, so it's coming out with all this purple, and I don't want purple. Hold on. That wasn't very smart of me. Practice, practice what I preach, not what I do. <laughs> So I pull out from the color that I just colored on. And this is a very, very, very pale color. So you might not see hardly anything. And that's okay. Now on the black up here, I'm going to start with the black and pull it towards his cheeks. And pull it out. And hopefully you'll see better when I do other images here. Because this is a very, very pale color. And I'm going to do that. He's holding a Christmas ball. This ought to show you real good. Now what colored pencils do is when you first put the color on, you can barely see it. But when I come in with my water, it intensifies it. See, I can, oh, uh, I'm sorry, you guys are really not seeing that very well. But I promise I'm doing it. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this. So I'm going to color in. Again, I don't need to put color everywhere. I don't need to color in that whole top hat. Now I'm going to come in with the, the water. See how that's an, uh, can't really, really, I promise it intensifies it. So once you add water to watercolor pencils, the color gets more intensified. You're just going to have to trust me and believe that I am telling you the truth because I am. <laughs> So I'm going to put some green, and then color that. And go back in with my pink. Now one thing that I do do is, remember those colors that I picked up on my background earlier? I put them to the side here, specifically, because if I need to if I have too much outline around it, I can color them in with those colors and make the background blend with my um, image that I'm about ready to put on. So that's a good little tip. So I always leave those out. I don't put them away. You know, like these colors after I'm done using them, I'll put them back into my little container. <sighs> Clean your brushes off in between. colors. And I won't be coloring here for too much longer, I promise. We'll get back to what I was doing. Okay, he's colored in enough for right now. You get the idea. So hopefully you have no questions on how to color in an image. So again, color the small sections and then pull out from there. And then remember also, I didn't show you here, but his little cheeks would be red because, you know, it's cold out. So I'm going to put just a tiny bit of red on his cheek and pull that out also. You know, so now I feel like I, we have to sing, but baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> that will be stuck you, in my head the rest of the night now. <laughs> you can sing for us, Joe. You don't want me singing, but that's oh, good. Oh, it's not pretty. That would only happen on a Friday night with right, uh, right sort of accoutrement. Oh, speaking of that... Guys, this is funny. Me and Joe are decided what we're having in our room for um, when we go to CHA. We have discovered a new drink called a poinsettia, right? And it's it's um it's 
Now you know my high moral standing. I'm not going to be. I don't drink. I don't dance. I never say foul words. Terry. Murphy. Okay, I'm going to drink this when we get our room in Vegas or in, uh, at CHA. And it's called a poinsettia, and it's um, cranberry juice, uh, triple sec, and um, champagne. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, this is another. You have to pay for the champagne. I can hear this coming now. Oh, you know it. <laughs> This is another stamp that I get at um, Sin City Stamps, and that's SinCityStamps.com. And I'm going to use uh, Stays on Ink in green. And what I'm going to do is show you how to use a stamp like this to make a tree. So I'm going to make a tree right here. I am going to come towards me just a little bit, and then I will come back towards you. So hold on just a second so I can get my tree going. When you start a tree, there's two things that you got to start with. You got to start with um, the top of the tree and then the bottom of the tree, and you'll understand what I mean. So I'm inking up just kind of the top part of this um, image. I don't need the whole image right now for the top part of the tree, and I'm basically going to make a half a tree. So I want my tree to be to about right here. So that image is going to go right there. Hopefully, nicely. So I'm going to press real hard here and get a good image. Perfect. Okay, and then I want my tree to end about right here. See what I'm saying? It's going to come down. So about right here. So I need, I need a piece of paper to be my protection. There we go. I'm going to cover up my... Um, snow that I got here, and this is just a piece of paper I literally just pulled out of the trash. Literally. Now I am going to stamp up the, ink up the whole image this time. And then that's going to come in about here. Again, trying to get myself a nice good image here. My book's lumpy, so i got to work at it. So there we go. So there's where we're going with my tree. I, high standards of poetry. I love drinking with cranberry juice. That's cool. So you see where we're going. We got an image going down the uh, side here. Tree. So now we just fill in in between. I'm going to ink up. And I'm going to stamp. And I don't like that down there, so I gotta fix that. Gotta figure out how to fix that. I think I'm gonna take my <coughs> stamp off the mount to fix that. Because the reason I'm taking it off the mount is I can get my fingers in there and kind of get into those small um, small sections a little better. So I like that. And since I still have ink on here, I'm just going to go in and do a little more stamping. I'm going to just use up the rest of this ink. Okay, there we go. So there's my tree on the side there. And yeah, I got a little bit of a mistake there, so let's see if I can fix that. It stays on, so it's not going to fix real well. I might be able to cover it up a little bit. And I just grab my color pencil, see if I can blend it out. No, nope, that's okay. We'll work with it. Okay, my two little guys. This guy has a little bulb in his hand, like he's decorating the tree. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to put him there. And then this little guy, he's got bulbs in his hands, like dancing around. Isn't it cute? It's just like making trees. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so here's uh, that other guy. I'm going to put him in there. <coughs> and then I also have some really cool um, snowflake stamps, also from Sin City Stamps. I believe it was on the same plate as these guys. 
So I'm going to put them on before, oh wait, nope, nope. I want to put that in first. This is a Merry Christmas and has two snowflakes. I'm going to do that first. So, and I'm going to do that in red. And I'm going to use stays on. But any permanent ink would work. You could use a, uh, hey, let me tell you the winner. We have a new winner this week because we had so many new playing. I'm so excited. And her name is Carrie Lupford. Carrie Lupford. You are our winner tonight. And you have won some Fiber Castell watercolor pencils. There is, I think it's, there's three or four in there in the pack that I'm sending you. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was something like that. Now I'm going to switch over to... You could scale this right down, Terry, and put it on a postcard. Be the <laughs> winter postcard. I know, you're pushing it, huh? Now I'm going to grab the blue stays on and the snowflakes stamps. And I'm going to start putting some snowflakes on. And I'm just going to put some random snowflakes around. I'm not going to get too crazy. Sometimes that thing just gets in the way. It's easier to just stamp with by your hand. Especially when your book starts getting lumpy. I find it easier just to pick this up and stamp with it than I find it putting it on a, uh, a uh, block. And remember to stamp off your page. Important. Stamp off your page. Okay. Me likey. Me likey. Okay. Now I need my gel medium. Gel medium. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to put on my desk. Um, you could use like PPA also. Um, I like my gel medium. Make sure you use matte for an adhesive. Another paintbrush. Oh, Carrie's here. Very cool. Okay, Carrie, what you need to do is you need to uh, catch me on Facebook and email me your address or not email me, Facebook me, your address, and I will send you something. So here's my first guy, and I'm just going to glue him down. I put some matte medium on the back, gel medium. And then, I, like I've always told you guys, I always go over my images completely with matte, with the gel medium again. And this will make him seal in there permanently. So, very cool. So make sure you do that. Go over your image completely. I do this with my stickers. I do this with all kinds of stuff. Just about anything that's going to be in my book for any length of time, I will gel medium it down. So there's the one. Look how cute he is. Sorry. I am not a cutesy girl, I swear. But I just think these guys are adorable. I don't know if you guys watch cartoons. I do. I don't have kids either. I love the penguins of Madagascar. Oh my god, they are so funny. I don't know if anybody else will admit that they watch them. But I do. Look how cute that is. Okay. Okay, cute, 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 cute. Where are we? Okay, gel medium away. Cute, cute, cute. Just adorable. Now, the only thing I wanted to do left on here is thought possibly these might kind of make cool ornaments, but I'm not positive. I use the same tree. I want to show you where I did this tree before. There it is, too. 
So that's the same idea with the same tree. See that? Thought about using these as ornaments, but I don't think they're gonna be too big, so I'm changing my mind. The next thing I would do, oh, I want to show you this too. This one is kind of the same idea as what I did a few minutes ago, but instead of using the gel, I had done the whole background in this one, so I had to go over with white. I used Tim's Holtz Distressed to make it white down there. It worked pretty well. I want to come in with some stickles. And these is that kind of uh, the crystal ones that will make it kind of look like snow. And then I grab some blues and reds and purples on my desk. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but that's what's on my desk. So let's come over, get these going. Mm, it's been a while since I used this one. Let's see if this one's dead. This one might be dead. <laughs> I hate when they do that. Is there any questions while I'm trying to get this guy to move? That's not moving. Hmm. Any questions at all? Yeah, you don't have kids and you watch cartoons too? Yeah, me too. I admit I do not have children and I love my cartoons. I grabbed a couple more stickles to see if I can get one of these to work. This one's kind of a uh, glittery too. Yeah, this one's working. I want to do his hat, a little ball at the end of his hat. Now, stickles take forever to dry. So make sure this is your last very step that you do. And then leave your book open because if you have, you know how it is, if you got these sitting around and you're trying to move your hand to do the designs, and you're just going to get your hand in this, I promise. So just do this last. So I did his... his um, the two balls on the end of their uh, hats. I think I'm going to put a little bit on the tree to make it look like it's got some snow on it. And then I'm going to do a little bit on these. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty. couple on these snowflakes, and then that's where I'm going to end it. Because, like I said, I'm going to get to the point where my hand's going to start getting in all the way with the uh, the painting. Now we are having a class next week, and I'm actually giving away a really cool prize next week. So make sure you enter during the week um, using uh, Yakutomo again. Again, go to my blog tomorrow, which is terrysproul.blogspot.com and I will have the link to all of that. And I will also ask that you guys um, like their page for me. Oh, that looks really cool. I know you can't really see the glitter, but it really glittered up there. Oh, and Terry, tomorrow at, I think, 11 a.m., I'm starting a contest at Art Papers Online. Um, where we're giving away a pound of art paper, making oh. all kind of perfect for collage. So oh, that's on that's Facebook. A... What do we got to do? Well, stay tuned. I'll announce the contest on Facebook, but you'll have to like Art Papers Online, and then if you, you can get extra points if you refer a friend or mention it in a post. So lots of ways to enter, but it's a pound of art paper assorted, with different sizes different pieces. It's fabulous for collage and artwork. Anywhere in the world. Did you guys all hear that? That's... Well, there you go, guys. Okay, there's my page. I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, tonight's lesson, I guess, is... Oh, we can put links on here. Very cool. Thank you, Robin. I didn't know we can put links on here. Um, my lesson tonight is snow. You don't have to make it just like mine, but try to make some snow or something like that. And then the watercolor pencils, um, use watercolor pencils to make a background and try to color an image. It doesn't have to be the same images as mine, but it's always wonderful you do, you know, if you can go over to um, Sin City, St excuse me, Sin City Stamps and let them know how much you like their products. And we almost always have sales over there, so... Look for those. I am switching cameras to me. 
And I'm going to actually let you guys go here pretty early. I hope you enjoyed it. I like my page. And I will post a picture of it later so maybe you can see more of the glitter when the uh, the uh, when it dries a little more. So I want to thank everybody for joining me. I want to thank you guys so much for putting your pages on there. It just warms my heart. If you're watching this, give me a thumbs up. I need my thumbs up. And check out my blog. Also, um, design team calls. Uh, Honorgrummer.blogspot.com has one. It's only a couple more days on that one. And tomorrow I'm going to be posting one for Sin City Stamps. So watch my Facebook page. Okay, guys, I'm going to let you go. You guys have a great night. And thank you again for joining me. And where is my shutoff button? <sighs> Used to have it. They moved it again. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, everybody have a good night. Bye.